going? Do you guys just feel like you were transported back to high school? Because I sure do. Um, I'm Sydney Buxbaum. I'm a writer at Entertainment Weekly. And I've been obsessed with uh, John Green's book since it first came out in 2005. I was in high school myself. I was the same age as these characters. I was dealing with the same issues, asking the same questions about growing up, finding your identity. So I'm really honored to be here tonight with the stars of Hulu's upcoming limited series adaptation, Looking for Alaska. So please welcome Charlie and Christine to the stage. <laughs> So everyone here just watched the first episode of your new Hulu series. And uh, for people who have not read the book, that opening scene and uh, final warning that this is all taking place 102 days before, it's pretty ominous. For those who haven't read the book, what can you tease about what this countdown is leading towards? It's <laughs> a tough question. <laughs> Starting with the hard ones, guys. I mean, there's definitely something that happens. I can say that much. <laughs> it's tragedy. not like, yeah, we're not leading you on in any way. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah, I don't know if, uh, uh, we probably can't spoil that, right? No. Yeah, sorry guys. <laughs> <laughs> You're just gonna have to watch. That's how it goes, I guess. <laughs> well, you guys will have to watch when it comes out on Friday. Um, and for those in the audience who obviously have not read the book, the premiere is a great introduction to these characters and this world. So what can you tell them about what they're going to see from the next seven episodes of the show? Wow, I mean, we go through a lot of different things. We go through um, first love, friendship, loss. Um, I don't know, all the things, you know, the, all your firsts of, you know, the growing up. Um, it's really hard to sum all these things up, <laughs> I'm realizing, but... Yeah, I mean, really the story is just about these kids, and, and I think that's, the, reading the book, I was a big fan of the book, and I think that was really how I fell in love with it, was just through these characters and really just spending time with them. And for a majority of the story, too, there isn't really any one thing that they're all focused on. They're all kind of living their lives independently, and then, you know, there are lots of pranks and things like that that happen, but, but other than that, it's really just them, you know, like she said, going through all those things that you go through when you're... 16. Mm -hmm. And so tell me a little bit about when you guys both first discovered not only this book, but John Green as an author. Um, I read the book for the first time when I was in high school, and I had heard about John Green, watched The Vault in Our Stars, and uh, was really obsessed with that, but I really just fell in love with this book in particular, just because I felt um, a lot less alone. I was in high school, and I was going through a lot of those things, and... Um, and then even revisiting it now, it's, it's still so relevant. I feel like all the topics and things he goes through is just, um, yeah, it still matters so much. Yeah, I had a similar experience in that. I, this was actually, when I first read the book, that was my first experience reading anything f of, of John's. And, and I really just, it, it, exactly what she said, I think he, he writes from such an, an open and honest place. And, and he really is that way in person as well. And but you can really tell so much, I think, through his writing. And and that was I, I read it when I was about fifteen and I just connected so much with the character Miles and especially his inner dialogue and what he wanted out of life and and then, you know, his feelings for all of these people. There are there are all things the the questions he was asking, all things that I really felt like I was going through at the same time. And so that was it, and then and then I actually then I read Paul and Our Stars and the other books, but but yeah, Looking for Alaska <laughs> was my <laughs> my first and my favorite. <laughs> and um, this adaptation comes from the OC showrunners Josh Woo! Schwartz and Stephanie Savage. They obviously know their teen dramas, um, but what I think is really cool is that they have decided that this is going to be just eight episodes telling the entire story of the book, open and shut, one season. So, what did you guys think of? that decision to, you know, tell this story open and closed in one season? Um, well, I'm just really glad we got to do it in this way with, um, it was supposed to be, I mean, it's been 13 years in the making, this whole thing, but it was going to be made into a movie four years ago, and I'm just really glad we have it in TV format now, and that we get to spend more time with the characters, and it's not told from Oz's point of view anymore, which is also a thing, a thing I thought was really important, and we get to spend more, um, yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, no, I mean, and to that point, I think, like, um, one thing I talked, the first time I talked to Josh and Steph before I had the job or anything, that was something I brought up, because to me, it's a really important part of the story that there is a, a definite ending. And, I mean, even in the first episode, you know, my character's obsessed with how people end their lives and, and, or, or what note they leave on. And I think it's so important for this story as well that it's a very clear, this is the final moment of, of this story. And, and that was something that they completely agreed with and were so on the same page about and something that John was really um, thought was very important. Because, you know, I think especially because we've seen recently where, you know, books that get turned into things can end up going on longer than the book. And, and I think just for this story in particular, I think it was really important that it kind of stuck to the ending that it has. Um, so, yeah, we just got really lucky that everyone was on the same page about that. And Christine, like you said, <coughs> Uh, this has been a long time coming, bringing the story to the screen. And you've actually been attached to it kind of a lot longer than people may realize. So talk about how you first kind of became attached to this project. Yeah, um, well, four years ago, it was going to be made into a movie. And I wasn't acting at the time, but I received an audition. Um, the director at the time found me somehow. And I sent in a bajillion tapes. And it was like a month, three months process. Um, and I got to be part of the chemistry, and it was so close, and then unfortunately the whole thing went away, uh, which was heartbreaking. But yeah, I kept asking every year my agents if it would come back around and how I could get involved again. And then I was lucky enough to meet with Stephanie uh, Savage and Josh Schwartz, and here we are. So it's, yeah, it's, it was a dream come true. Was Alaska different in the first you know, few iterations that you saw of this character? You say, could you repeat yeah, that? what in the you were a part of this project for multiple versions. So was Alaska ever different than what fans are going to see in this series? She was. She was always. We've always. I mean, they've always stayed true to the the book because it's um, there's so much on the page and so much to draw from from there. But there's just we just spend so much more time with her on this. So I got to know her on a deeper level. But she's very similar to the book. I mean, the the movie script. And um, Charlie, how did you first get attached to this project? Well, I actually, I, I auditioned for the movie as well, and I really, really, <laughs> I really wanted it as well. Um, I even wrote John a letter, <laughs> which I just <laughs> reread recently. It was kind of sad, but, um, <laughs> but you know, endearing. And, um, and I wanted it so bad, and I met with the director, and met with the, the, the guys who adapted it, and, um, and I, got to a certain stage and they were just like, you're just too young, we're sorry. Even though, I mean, I was at the time, 16, 15. Um, and then, and I was of course really sad, but, and then it was a similar experience where uh, the subsequent years I would ask my agents like, hey, is there anything going on with that? And then finally, about a year ago now, um, they let me know what was going on with it. And then the process was just really lovely, and Josh and Steph turned out to be great. And it, it's crazy because they, Josh, wrote the first draft of of uh, the film script back in 2003. I think it was before the book was published. So they've been attached to it for longer than anybody. But um, but yeah, it all it all like she says, it's all dream come true. And it's pretty crazy. We're we're all here now. So what was in that letter? <laughs> <laughs> It was so funny because we did the Q&A last uh, night as well and somebody asked, because John brought it up, he was part of the Q&A and the moderator also asked what was in the letter. John said, don't tell them. <laughs> so I feel like it'd be wrong to do that. He said it's too personal. But he was just mostly talking about like, I, I just very much connected to the, the story of like a, a young guy who lives in a small town and feels like he hasn't found his tribe yet, his home. And and I was very much feeling that at the time. And I just really, you know, in the same way that she said she felt less alone reading the book for the first time, I very much got that same feeling of really, you know, having like a, a real friend through the book, which I think is a rare thing when you read anything, but yeah. And having a tribe is something that is so important to anyone growing up. So what were your tribes like when you guys were younger? Uh, well, we actually both moved a lot. Uh, we've been to a lot of different schools. I, I grew up between Norway and New Jersey, so I would always be back and forth and really didn't have a tribe, but I'd always try and fit in and find my tribe. 
So it's not until the, the later adult years that I, I have a good group. Yeah, and I, I kind of had a similar experience, and I, I also moved around. Um, I went to like eight different schools, and I never really had friends until, you know, I kind of got done with high school and everything that I really felt like, you know, I genuinely loved and weren't just there for convenience sake. Um, but I would say like really because of that, my family, I'm really, really close with my family. And so that's probably my tribe, <laughs> my forever tribe. That really does sound like Miles. <laughs> <laughs> and um, how does the show explore some of these, you know, deeper things, themes like love and loss and like class warfare that's a huge part of the book how does the show kind of explore those themes in a deeper way than what readers may have seen from the book i mean i, I think one thing that was also really appealing about it was that and this is something john's talked about a lot the reason why he was so excited that there was they were adapting into a miniseries was that there are things that are referenced in the book or things that you hear about from another character's perspective but you never really get to see because of course the book is entirely told through Miles' perspective um, that we were able to, to depict in this. And it's honestly just like, you know, really getting to see all of the characters really fleshed out. And, and I think of then, of course, you know, you're just in, in the nature of spending more time with these characters you're able to pick up hopefully a lot more but but I also think it's it's really hard because the book is just so so good and um, it's hard to build too much more onto that so hopefully we're able to just get everything in there <laughs> that's in there and so walk me through what was going through your mind when you both stepped onto set for the first time and became these characters oh gosh uh, well John was there the first day we were shooting which was terrifying I I had um, it's it's the shot where we're outside of the liquor store and I'm checking out the IDs and my hands were just shaking and we had to do it so many times because I could they just wouldn't stop shaking but then John came up and he was so sweet he was just like you just take your time and he, yeah he was so lovely but it was terrifying putting on the clothes for the first time and getting your hair and makeup done as the character and really just be in her car and yeah, it was really special and, and terrifying. <laughs> yeah, it was it was actually really nice because we had about three weeks before we started shooting of just rehearsal time. So we were, you know, getting to do lots of costume fittings and spending time with each other and just talking through the story and the characters and everything for such a long time before we actually started shooting. But I think we were able to ease into it a little bit because of that. And that helped a lot. Um, and, and just spending time with Josh and Steph and, and then John. And we got to go on a trip with John before we started shooting to the high school that he went to in Alabama. And he just shared so much of his life and his stories from high school with us and was so generous about that. So all of that stuff really, really helped, I think, preparing us as much as we could. But yeah, it was really terrifying <laughs> still. It was, <laughs> I remember it was very, very scary. <laughs> but we bonded over that as well. <laughs> And obviously there's going to be some, uh, you know, spoiler alert, you will cry. It does, does get emotional. So what was it like, you know, easing into the characters at first before you really got to those deeper, more emotional, heartbreaking scenes later on? Um, I, it was actually really beautiful. Uh, it was such a rare thing for me, um, probably for anybody, but, but really everyone almost everyone on the set and all the crew guys really everybody had read the book and really loved the story so much so i remember very early on in the process the dp this guy ramsey nickel took every one of the cast aside separately throughout the day and just told them like hey you know i know it's going to get really tough down the line and i just want you to know like we're always there for you any of my crew is always going to be there for you if you guys need any time and so the tone immediately was just so warm and welcoming, and I think that really helped. And then it was kind of nice, because even though we didn't shoot it exactly in sequence, because we were shooting it um, episode to episode, we were able to really spend all that time with each other. So by the time it got really, really tough, our bond was so, so strong, and I think that you know helps as much as it can. But, but yeah, I think if we didn't have each other, then that it would have been much, much harder. <laughs> yeah. 
And, and Charlie taught us this thing that we would do before scenes where we'd all hold hands and we'd drop in, um, which really did change a lot. For, you know, it was a game changer for me, at least, to kind of, you know, because it's kind of chaotic on set sometimes. There's a lot happening and people are coming up to you from all different directions. And so right before the takes, we would hold hands and we'd kind of like ground ourselves into what we were going um, into, which really helps me, at least. But yeah, the support and love was, yeah, without that, I don't know what it would be. <laughs> and um, what were the most important aspects of these characters that you knew that you had to get right? Um, I mean, for me, I, I was really fortunate and spoiled because, of course, the book really is mainly through, or uh, entirely through my character's eyes, so I got to really be you know, have an easy access to what was going on inside his head throughout the story. Um, so I think, you know, I had somewhat of like a, a blueprint in that way, but but I think, you know, it's always tricky when, I, I would imagine when you're adapting these things, and I really just like had to put all my trust in John and, and Josh and Steph, because they have such a tight bond as well, and, um, and John was just so generous from the beginning of like, he told us, you know, these are your characters now, they're not mine anymore. And, and he really was saying like, that he really felt as though, you know, we knew a different side to these characters than, than he did. And to just really trust that and be confident in that. And so you kind of just do that and then hope for the best and hope you don't screw it up. But, but yeah, I mean, you know, I think each one of us um, for very, very different reasons have deep, deep connections to our characters. and. Um, I think it was just about being able to trust that and, and, and be able to lead with that as much as possible. Yeah, I, I um, definitely agree with a lot of that. It is really scary when the, the book had a big following and um, I feel like there were a lot of expectations about who Alaska is or is supposed to be and I was really scared um, about, about making sure I was doing it right but then I kind of had to just let it go and um, it was mostly her external external bits that I was struggling with, but, you know. <laughs> yeah. And how have playing these characters impacted your lives so far? I mean, the show hasn't come out yet, but have you learned anything from Miles in Alaska? I, I feel like I've, I'm trying to at least, um, she really taught me, she's so strong, so I feel like I learned a lot about her strength and um, kind of putting myself out there more and, and standing up for what I believe in. She's very just, um, she just really trusts herself in, in a, a way that I don't, and I'm learning how to, how to do that. I mean, for me, um, definitely, you know, I learned I don't look in cargo pants or shorts. <laughs> um, that was Nobody very does. <laughs> um, um, but no, I mean, uh, in all seriousness, I, I really like, it was crazy because when I first read the book and I was 15, you know, I, I was at such a specific point in my life and I very vividly remember like what was going on and what my struggles were and what I really wanted out of my life at that time. And then now to be able to be kind of, you know, for that to be the f my first, you know, experience with the story and then now to be like doing this and talking about it and so much has changed for me and I've learned so much in my own life. It's really nice to be able to like i do see so much of myself especially at that age in this character and, and still to this day see a lot of myself um many times to a fault uh <laughs> with this character but but i think like really just i don't know i i just have such a love for for this kid miles but also really all these characters and, and i think that has been like such a gift you know and and that love has just grown through now knowing all these people and and them giving all of their lives to this story as well, so, so yeah. And what do you guys hope that young people are gonna take away or learn from watching the show? Well, I hope, you know, after reading it, I felt a lot less alone, so I hope that people will watch it and feel like they can relate to any of the characters, and I hope it will just start a conversation. Um, you know, one, you know, don't judge a book by its cover. We're all going through our own battles and struggles, and I think that's, really important, like Alaska, for example, keeps a lot inside her and has this facade and you really wouldn't know. And um, so I hope that people will feel less alone and, and talk more openly about how we're really feeling. Yeah, and I just, I mean, I think when I first read the book, 
the feeling that I got was that I just connected I, with so many little things and big things that the story was about. And, and um, I just hope that people just have a genuine heart to heart connection with these characters and, and with the story in, in whatever way that is for them. You know, I think that this story really just is about life and asking all the questions that I think, you know, everyone kind of asks themselves and each other all the time. And I just think if, if anybody can just have a genuine deep connection with any part of this story, then that make me really happy. And this is obviously such a different kind of teen show than something like Euphoria, but each are, you know, equally as authentic to what teens kind of go through when they're growing up at this age. So why do you think something like Looking for Alaska, which was written, you know, over a decade and a half ago, why is it still relevant today for teens to watch now? Well, I think the questions that we go through or the things that we talk about are still just as relevant regardless of the social media or the things that have changed. I think, you know, f experiencing love for the first time or, you know, f all these things that we talk about, I think that's still happening with teenagers today. It's just maybe um, more heightened or different different conversations. Yeah, no, I can I completely agree with that. And I think that was actually, because there was some question at the beginning, because um, it's not really specified when the book is set. And so I know there was a question of, you know, if they were going to set it in today or if they were going to set it in the 90s when John was in high school or, you know, what they ended up doing in 2006. And I think that was smart because, and they've talked about this, it's right before, you know, technology was obviously, you know, very, very different, and people had cell phones and everything, and, and that really does have an impact on the story and everything. But I also think it's because then it kind of clears away, like, and this was our experience making the show as well. You know, we shot almost entirely on this location in rural Louisiana, and we didn't have any cell service or anything like that. So we really were kind of living that same life for about five months. And, and I think it just, like, it really then encourages all of the conversation to just be about these people and and not make it about anything else and and I think that that's a really nice thing even if it's a a little detail I think it really makes a big difference in the story and you guys um, talked a little bit about how John was on set when you guys were filming so how much y was he available to you were you asking questions about these characters and what kind of advice did he give you Well, after the trip uh, that we got to do with him to Alabama, I feel like we got a lot out of the way. We got to talk. I, I, we got to ask the questions we wanted to ask, and he would tell us, you know, his story. And then after that, like Charlie just said, he kind of just let us take control of the characters now. So he kind of stayed a little on the outside, but he was there for support when we needed it. Um, and he visited set a couple of times, which was really lovely. So he's always around, but he kind of just wanted us to um, to go with it from there, I think. Yeah, John kind of has this magical, like, he just kind of, like, come, as soon as he comes into a room, like, he really lights up the whole room, but he just kind of is, like, floating through, like, he, you know, he would just show up on set randomly, <laughs> and he just, like, but he's just such an open guy, and his heart is so big, and so he would just be crying and, you know, telling you, like, how much this whole experience means to him, and it was really, really beautiful, like, he just gave so much to us, and, and was so generous with everything, and, is just a really lovely, lovely person. So it was always really nice having him. And I, I just like he has this energy where I feel like any time of the day, w any one of us could call him up. And even if it's just to talk to somebody, like even if it's not related to <laughs> this at all, I think he's just such a giving person when it comes to that. And um, I think that absolutely shows in his work as well. But but yeah, that was really we had such a. I mean, it really is kind of like a dreamlike experience the relationship that we can now have with him, especially. I know that um, one of your co-stars got a little nervous knowing that John was watching him film. So what, what happened with Denny's, uh, one of Denny's first takes, Denny who plays uh, the Colonel? Well, that was on the first day of shooting. We were doing that scene um, where he, it's where he first comes into the room and we meet for the first time. And he's, uh, or maybe it's actually we've moved in and he's writing coffee table on the, on the box or whatever <laughs> and um and it was really he was very nervous but he's a very confident guy in real life so he's acting like you know everything was fine but he kept misspelling table and <laughs> so he would spell it coffee t-a-b-e-l and like it just kept on happening <laughs> and then finally he kind of 
broke and and john like he told him oh it's okay everything's gonna be okay and he got you know at least one down but um <laughs> <laughs> but yeah <laughs> and um christine i know that you were talking a little bit about this before but um obviously there's always going to be changes made from the source material when adapting something for a tv show but something that I, i'm always fascinated by is this book actually came out before the term manic pixie dream girl was even invented but in the book, she kind of is this trope because it's told through Miles' perspective and you don't really get to know her on like a deeper level. So what has that been like getting to explore her in a more expanded way on the show and kind of tackling that trope and finally giving her more life you know, than she got in the original? We were definitely very aware of, of that term and wanting to steer away from that and like what we've been talking about, getting to spend more time with her or just each character, but also... Alaska was very important that we got to spend time with her solo and see her in her vulnerable moments. Um, so you'll, you'll see that throughout the show, but I think that really helped with making her seem more human and not just like this, um, you know, from, from this guy's point of view, but getting to see her and her internal struggles and um, yeah, getting to feel that more. And what did that mean to you getting to finally kind of tackle that criticism of this character? Um, well, I haven't per, like f personally just experienced that, but um, it, it was just something very important for us to to, to make sure what she wasn't going to become this um, manic pixie dream girl. Um, yeah, I. Yeah. And what kind of conversations with John did you have about that? Well, it, he wasn't that much part of that conversation, but it was more so just like when we were getting into costumes, and it was more so conversations with Josh and Stephanie. Um, but they were so, they already were very aware of it, and so in all the dialogue and, and the scenes that they added to make, make sure that we got to see her in her personal moments, they did, um, they did a very good job of that. So, yeah. And, uh, what other changes or expansions are we going to get to see in the next seven episodes? Well, you're going to get to spend a lot more time. I mean, uh, certain characters that are referenced in the book, like, the character of Alaska's boyfriend, you know, you really get to spend a lot of time with him. And um, there's a whole s section where Alaska ends up going to his college campus and has a whole experience there. And so, you know, and I think just on uh, t to piggyback on what she was saying about that earlier, I think that was really something that was so important to everybody involved was like, if we're going to do this, we should really be knowing why we're why we're doing it in this way, you know, and I think that was so important that especially to John more than anybody that like the character of Alaska was seen as a real person because I think he's very aware of the fact that in the book you know because Miles is really an unreliable narrator you're not really s hearing about a person you're just hearing about an idea of a person and I think it was really important that all these people including the colonel and and Takumi and really everyone is is finally seen as a as a you know fully fleshed out person but um but yeah, I forget, what was your question, sorry. <laughs> what other like, changes or expansions? Yeah, so I mean, to that, uh, to finish that, um, I think you're just getting to see uh, all of these characters' lives now, you know, in full, like you really get to spend time with the Colonel at his home and see where he comes from and his mom, and um, that's a really lovely experience, and that's in the book, but, um, but you really get to spend time with those characters, and that ca the colonel has a relationship with Dr. Hyde, and you get to find out a lot more about Dr. Hyde and his past, and um, Ron Cephas Jones plays that character, and you know he just brings so much to that character, and so that's something that I'm very excited to get to watch again. But, um, but yeah, I mean, I, you know, again, you should just hopefully watch the show and <laughs> see all the things that, you know, little things and big things we've added. Some really exciting additions are also how many more prank scenes we get what were th what was that like filming all of those you know mischief and mayhem scenes they were a lot of fun uh, there's one prank especially at the end the, the, there's one in the last episode that was and I don't want to spoil it but um, it was very exciting for me to shoot and it is in the book but um, but getting to actually bring it to life and it in involves a, a male stripper it's very exciting <laughs> out of school so that's definitely something to look forward to but there were lots of fun pranks I mean Gosh, yeah, I don't know which. To yeah, pick episode from. two is filled with them, and that was that was a blast shooting. We were just running around, creating chaos. <laughs> it was great. Were there any pranks happening behind the scenes, off camera? <laughs> I think we left them all on camera. Yeah, I think we were sick of pranks. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't think we did a, any pranks. No, not us. We were, yeah, we were just like playing music and <laughs> trying to be nice to each other. <laughs> how nice. <laughs> and um, another big surprise that's coming is how much more uh, fans are going to get to see about the Eagle because in the book he's just kind of, you know, an authority figure. But on the show, Timothy Simons from Veep, he really makes it a heartbreaking human character. So what was that like getting to explore that character even more? He's just incredible. Um, just getting to work with him, I had a lot of emotional scenes with him. And you did too, right? I, was, I guess um, And he was just so open and generous. And um, yeah, I loved getting to get to, to know the Eagle a lot more, to get to hear his backstory and why he was the way he was. And um, Tim did such a good job of creating that backstory. And you spoke a little bit about this before, about how you had extra time kind of to rehearse before you started filming. So how did you guys bond together to you know, build the foundation for what Miles and Alaska's connection is gonna be, knowing that that's kind of what this entire show rests on? I mean, honestly, it really started, I think, in that, that first weekend that we went to Alabama with John, and we've just spent, like, hours in a car together and just sharing music, and John, of course, sharing about his, you know, his connection to both of those characters, and um, he very much, you know, with both Miles and Alaska, really put so much of his own life into those characters, and I think it was just through those conversations and... Um, and then on uh, with our director, the first episode too, of really just kind of piecing together why these characters, you know, might have the connection that they have, and and just making sure that we're like setting up that connection to really, you know, all kind of work out. And I don't want to spoil anything, but you know, um, really making sure that there was a very clear heart to that connection, and and making sure that we were both on the same page about that. And I think we just got lucky that you know, we we were able to hopefully find it. <laughs> And you've mentioned music a few times. I know that you were a huge uh, music proponent on set. You made some playlists for everybody. What was that like sharing that music with your co-stars? Yeah, I mean, music is really important for me. And I think, I mean, yeah, she mentioned it earlier with the dropping in thing. Like, there were a lot of things that I kind of um, would do just for myself uh, and working experiences that then on this, I mean, again, like, the tone on set was just so open and everyone was just sharing so much. And so you know, they, the rest of the cast were just really down for me to kind of get to play music. And I think it kind of helped because it just really enforces that feeling that everyone's really on a team and we're all doing this for the same reason. And I think that's really important because um, it's so easy to accidentally isolate yourself. And I think it's really important to make sure because really that, that is the whole show are just these characters and their connections. So, so that was really, you know, important. But yeah, we had lots of good times dancing. And, you know, we had lots of late days too, so it was important to get ourselves through it somehow. <laughs> and what was it like exploring the fashion and hairstyles of this time period? Because I know that you guys weren't teenagers in 2005, so this was kind of new for you. Yeah, it was really, really fun getting to see all the extras with their like beguette purses and um, the flare pants and the low rise. I really enjoyed being in that world. Alaska's kind of, she stole um, more of like a hippie style from her mother. Um, and it's, it's a little bit different. It's a little colorful and out there, which was really fun. But yeah, I loved going back to that. I, lo I love that style. Yeah, I mentioned the cargo shorts thing, so <laughs> I, I didn't really, you know, I was not gifted with the wardrobe that she had or Takumi or any of those characters, but, but you know, it was, it was helpful <laughs> getting into the character. Sounds like you will definitely be wearing a lot more cargo shorts in real life. Absolutely. That's that a is the moral influence. of the story. <laughs> And uh, while well you guys are telling the story that's set in like 2005, 2006, obviously Josh and Stephanie have already created a show that was actually airing during that time. And I know that Christine, you're actually an OC super fan yourself. So what was that like getting to work with them? Were you kind of asking them questions about <laughs> their first show? Yeah, 100%. I'd, I'd be so annoying, uh, but they were lovely and they shared shared uh, a lot of beautiful moments. My family and I, we watched the OC religiously. Religi I'm sorry, I can't say that word. Um, but uh, so getting to meet Josh and Stephanie and actually get to work with them was beyond um, 
yeah so it was it was all crazy yeah, and she actually because i had never seen the oc before or any i hadn't seen gossip girl so she really introduced me to all of that on this experience so it was nice because we could go to set and i'd be like oh so this is the episode that <laughs> seth did the you know or whatever and josh would tell us what was going on behind the scenes and she spoiled a really big thing for me early on though um which was tough That's and i was unforgivable. like <laughs> <laughs> i know it really is but you know I forgive her. It's okay. <laughs> oh, you guys have come a long way. <laughs> and um, before we wrap up, what are you guys most excited for everyone to get to see from the rest of the show? I mean, so many things. There's so many things in the book that I'm really excited. I'm excited to see them again, and I'm excited for anyone who was a fan of the book to to get to experience watching it. Because as a fan of the book, like genuinely, I really am a fan of the show and. Um, I, there's so many things. There's so many little moments, and I just can't wait for people to connect with it. Hopefully, and you know, whatever they think, whatever that is, I I, I can't wait to see what that is. I couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> Amazing. Well, you guys will have to check it out when it starts streaming on Hulu this Friday. Mark your calendars. It's a great binge watch. Make sure you stock up on Kleenex. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you so much.